Okay, Blaine. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Hi, I'm Greg Kuhn. Today I'm reading from my popular book, Why Quantum Physicists Create More Abundance. Who among us hasn't been entranced by the promises made by the Law of Attraction? I assume you have, considering you're reading this book. Me too. To hear that you can attract the things you desire into your life is an amazing premise, and it most likely jibes with your intuition about how life works. After all, our culture is replete with homilies, parables, and metaphors that teach and reinforce the idea that we are the source of our material experiences. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. You reap what you sow. What we continually think about eventually will manifest in our lives. Be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. What comes around goes around. You get what you give. Treat others as you would have them treat you. The heart that gives gathers. Whatever your mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Who wouldn't want to wave a magic wand and make her desires manifest? Who wouldn't want a personal genie to grant her wishes? And since the law of attraction more or less proposes these possibilities, who wouldn't be interested in using it to achieve her dreams and desires? Yet for so many, using the law of attraction to fulfill their dreams and desires remains as elusive as those dreams and desires themselves. I'm always hearing from readers who feel they must be doing something wrong, or more commonly that the law of attraction lacks a clear set of instructions for its full and proper utilization. I empathize with these frustrations. So I have created this book to show you that the law of attraction is very real and available to you right now. The Law of Attraction is not mystical or esoteric. Through the incredible modern science of quantum physics, we now understand just how our material world is created. And guess what? Quantum physics shows us that you create your material world, just as the Law of Attraction promises. I hope that as you learn what quantum physics has to say about how you create your material world, your inspiration and motivation to use the Law of Attraction is bolstered and fortified. I believe you will find that inspiration here and be able to finally use the Law of Attraction just as you always hoped you'd be able to. In this book I will remove the mysterious veil from the Law of Attraction and teach you in plain simple everyday language how you are creating your material world right now. It has been my experience and an experience shared by thousands of readers that once you understand the science of deliberate creation, your use of the law of attraction is injected with rocket fuel. And as you are about to learn, quantum physics releases that elusive genie you've always been searching for and allows you to begin aligning your material world with your desires as you've always hoped. Quantum physics is the most accurate and reliable body of science ever created. Its accuracy tests to hundredths of a decimal point. Famous physicist and author Brian Greene tells us that it is difficult to imagine we will ever come any closer to understanding precisely how our universe operates than through quantum physics. The story of quantum physics starts with the first scientific revolution, which gave the world an immense set of rules describing how the universe works, and finally resolved most of the mysteries of it, or so we thought. The science created by the first scientific revolution came to be known as classical physics. The first scientific revolution began in the 16th century and featured such names as Galileo, Kepler, Copernicus, and Newton. We're all familiar with today's one name only stars like Madonna, Bono, and Oprah. Well, these men were some of the original stars with one name only status. So immense were the discoveries these men made during the first scientific revolution that we still learn about them in our high school science classes. In fact, by the end of the 19th century, most scientists believed that the scientific revolution had everything figured out. In 1875, for example, when famous physicist Max Planck was deciding on a discipline of study, 
he was liberally encouraged to go into mathematics because, quote, all the interesting work in physics has been done. The first scientific revolution was so powerful it ultimately influenced every aspect of the industrialized Western world. The philosophers, sociologists, psychologists, physicians, politicians, artists, writers, and other visionaries of modern Western society used the classical physics of the first scientific revolution to create and construct everything we know about our social, organizational, and personal paradigms. If you live in an industrialized Western country, you live in a society that bases almost all its knowledge of the material world and how we operate within it upon classical physics. Consider what life was like prior to the first scientific revolution. People believed, among other things, that the earth was stationary and the sun revolved around it. A bizarre idea by today's standards. They believed that your blood didn't circulate through your body, that all matter was made of one of four elements, fire, water, earth, or air, and that the best way to ward off colds was to wrap urine-soaked hose around their necks. I could go on and on, listing more ideas that make Renaissance-era humans seem like cavemen when compared to modern man. And if you think those beliefs were held only by the common, uneducated people, think again. Even the select educated few believed that anything studied outside of law, theology, medicine, or the arts was magic, and that academic studies of one of those four fields should involve observation alone. Renaissance era thinkers believed that a real scientist followed Aristotle's method of inductive reasoning and never conducted experiments. It all sounds quite crazy by our modern standards, doesn't it? You certainly don't have to be a scientist to know all those beliefs and practices are way off the mark. The average Joe off the street in the 21st century laughs at all these ridiculous notions. But the reason we laugh is not because we're inherently smarter than our Renaissance era ancestors. We're definitely much better educated, but we're not born with bigger and better brains than our predecessors. We know those, are, those ideas are off base because of the paradigm changes that occurred after the first scientific revolution. It is hard for us to imagine what difficulty and courage it would have taken the average European to digest and believe the earth-shattering discoveries coming from the first scientific revolution. Even though these findings were true and could be proven through experimentation and mathematical formulas, early adopters risked their very lives in latching on to these beliefs. The science of the first scientific revolution, classical physics, did eventually change the Western world's paradigms, though. In classical physics, the universe, or any material object in it, is seen as a huge machine with a set of intricately interacting parts like the inside of an old-fashioned clock. Each part of this machine has only a few simple properties and movements that are determined by two things, the part's mass and the forces acting upon the part. Classical physics worked perfectly, until 1887 that is. That year Albert Michelson and Edward Morley conducted an experiment to calculate the speed at which the Earth traveled through space, or the universal ether as it was called at the time. Classical physics told them that since half the year the Earth was moving toward the Sun, and the other half it was moving away, the speed of the Sun's rays should have varied accordingly with respect to the position of the observer as he traveled closer and further away. Michelson and Morley spent a full year taking measurements, and the speed they calculated that the Earth was traveling was zero miles per hour, which of course couldn't have been true. Houston, we have a problem. The Michelson and Morley experiment is now referred to as the most famous failed experiment of all time because it ushered into existence the science of quantum physics and the start of the second scientific revolution. Scientists wanting to explain the results of those experiments or that experiment discovered that classical physics could not be applied accurately to those parts of our universe that can't be seen with the naked eye. And you may not know all about this revolution yet but that's only because the great thinkers of the 21st century have only begun to apply its discoveries to every aspect of our culture, as was done earlier by Locke, Smith, Marx, Darwin, Freud, Taylor, etc. after the first scientific revolution. But make no mistake, similar paradigm changes are coming. 
Classical physics is still an accurate and appropriate science to use with the material world that's visible with the naked eye. But when we examine the very tiny and the very large world, we need a different science to understand its properties. That science is quantum physics, and it has changed almost all the rules. Quantum physics is strange and bizarre in that it violates our long-held beliefs about how the world functions. So it's tempting to dismiss it as nonsense, but dismiss it at your peril because quantum physics has proven to be one of the most successful physical theories ever created. The basic features of quantum physics are 1. Living matter or material reality is made up of organic or unified wholes that are often greater than the sum of their parts. This concept is called holism and it is the polar opposite of the machine metaphor of classical physics. 2. There is not necessarily a relationship between cause and effect. Action is not always caused by another force exerting itself. 3. The observer and the observed cannot be separated. The observer's observation and expectations become, literally, a part of what is being observed. In fact, the observer and the observed may be said to be two different perspectives of the same thing. 4. Linear systems are, are systems are not linear. They are equations whose effects are not proportional to their causes. There is a lack of logical sequence, correlation, and cohesion found in the universe where we once thought that everything was neatly and logically ordered. Don't quite know how to make sense of this information? You're not alone. I can't yet give you a list of household names who've created new paradigms from the concepts of quantum physics. That is because the second scientific revolution is only a century or so old, and the findings, will, the findings from it have not yet permeated our culture in the manner that classical physics had. But they will. Books such as those in my Why Quantum Physicist series are contributing to a change in belief systems that reflect this new, more accurate picture of our world. Because of quantum physics, our understanding of societal, cultural, social and personal structures, rules and dynamics are already changing. 20th century physicists such as Max Planck, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Erwin Schrödinger, and Albert Einstein have uncovered truths about our world just as paradigm shattering as those of Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, and Newton before them. We now understand that our universe is fundamentally different than we ever imagined and can prove this through quantum experiments and formulas. As you learn about the concepts of quantum physics, it can be challenging not to dismiss them because they are so radically different from what you have always known. But bear in mind that such dismissals will one day be seen in the same light as people who refuse to believe the world was round. And you're no flat earther, are you? <laughs>